What if I told you the Mini's Forum UM580 is just like the UM560, except it comes with a higher end CPU, power supply, and price tag. With that in the review and tank my analytics, wait, don't go yet, I have more. And viewers say I keep my videos to the point. Well, except for that bit and that. The Mini's Forum UM580 comes in the same black plastic box covered in rubber as I've reviewed before. Build quality is good, but not outstanding. It lacks a premium feel for the dollars. It comes with a vertical stand, SATA cable, spare rubber feet, HDMI cable, USB-C power supply, and monitor mount. The UM560's Ryzen 5625U is replaced for a Ryzen 5800H, which is 8 cores, 16 threads. There's an 80 US dollar price increase for the bare bones model, but it's only a $50 or $30 increase for the pre-built options. If you're not bare bonesing it, then the 5800H is easily the better deal over the 5625U, as you get a lot of extra performance for the dollars. So what do you get for those extra dollars? Well, apart from the 5800H CPU, the compact GAN power supply has been up to 100 watts, compared with the 65 watt unit bundled with the UM560. What's unique about this NUX size mini PC is that it supports USB-C power delivery. So if you have a compatible monitor, you can power it and get display with just the one USB-C cable. On the front, you've got dual USB-C 10 gigabit with one of them supporting DisplayPort out. There's also an audio jack. On the back, there's 2.5 gigabit LAN, dual USB 3 10 gigabit, dual HDMI, and dual USB 2. A good set of ports, I think. What it doesn't have is USB 4 or PCIe Gen 4 NVMe SSD support. But I guess we can't have everything. Or can we? No, we can't. Opening up this mini is just as bad as before. You have to rip off the rubber feet before you've got access to the screws. And then you still need a tool to pry it open. A 2.5 inch SATA drive can be added for additional storage. The CMOS battery isn't easily accessible, but the Wi-Fi module is an M.2 card, which is easily replaceable. There's no thermal pad for the NVMe drive, but with a plastic case, it probably wouldn't help a whole lot. Plastic, plastic everywhere. Give me metal, damn it. Oh, and I thought it might just be my previous unit, but both the UM560 and 580 were very picky with memory. Neither would boot with two sticks. Reseeding the memory didn't help either. What worked was to put a single stick in the bottom slot first. That booted. Then I added the second stick and it booted. I ended up doing this for both units. Weird, but whatever. The BIOS has some fan options you can tweak, but the default fan settings work fine. Windows 11 Pro is pre-installed with the pre-built options, but Ubuntu worked without issue if you want to go the Linux route instead. Chrome OS Flex didn't have drivers for Wi-Fi or Ethernet, so that makes it unusable. The UM580's Ryzen 5800H isn't the fastest single core CPU out there and lags behind most Intel variants by as much as 20% compared to the newly released i7 NUC12 Pro. Against the UM560, it's a tiny, tiny bit faster. But in multi-core, the UM580 does take the crown, just. It beats the much pricier i7 NUC12 Pro and the UM560 was 37% slower. So overall, the 5800H is a great productivity CPU. However, most of Intel's latest minis beat it in video encoding. The i7 NUC12 Pro was ahead by 9%, and the UM560 was behind by 28%. The UM580 has the highest 3D Mark score of any AMD unit this year. While the Intel minis are ahead in 3D Mark, that's not going to be the case in actual games, as you'll soon see. But as a comparison against the UM560, the UM580 is ahead by 19% in DX11 and 22% in DX12. Blind Warrior Sven reached out to me on Twitter wanting me to test Street Fighter V on the UM580. Check out his Twitch channel linked in the video description for a display of some impressive gaming skills. So I used the Street Fighter V benchmark to see when there was a recorded frame drop. That happened at 1080p medium settings. The average was 59.96 FPS over the benchmark, so it was close to a lock 60, but not perfect. In Forza Horizon 5, the UM580 is around 10% faster in average frame rate than the UM560 and i7 NUC12 Pro. In Hades, the UM580 is very close to the i7 NUC12 Pro.
I expected big gains in Doom Eternal, but the UM580 is only about 5% faster than the UM560. Valorant shows no gains across the board. We really need DDR5 for extra memory bandwidth. God of War shows some good gains for the UM580, around 18% better average frame rate. In Wii U emulation, the UM580 does pass the Splatoon test of holding 60 FPS. Breath of the Wild is only around 30 though, that's actually less than I expected. Now let's check out the easy, medium, and hard to emulate PS3 games. Ridge Racer is 60 FPS at 1080p, no problem. See you at the finish line. Wipeout HD Fury drops frames, but is highly playable. And Motorstorm Pacific Rift is very slow you'll be able to play a decent chunk of the PS3 library, especially at 720p. But more performance is needed for the best experience. Power draw is up on the UM580 in both idle and max, but 78 watts is plenty below the 100 watt limit of the power supply. The 5800H has impressive performance per watt compared to the Intel Minis. Maximum CPU temp was up over the UM560, but holds up well considering the additional heat from the higher power draw. It's also below all the Intel 12th gen units. The NVMe device temp was okay, however this isn't the NVMe's controller temperature, which is the hottest part. Few NVMe drives have a sensor for it. The UM580 has impressively low fan noise. Here's idle and load. Overall, I was pretty happy with the Mini's Forum UM580 and I like this series of minis. One problem with it is the late release date. I had it pre-ordered for a very long time and it only released recently. The UM690 is apparently coming out in late November with the Ryzen 6000 series CPU and DDR5 SODIMM support. It is a lot pricier, but should provide a significant boost to CPU and GPU performance. You might want to wait for that review before making a decision. If you need something right now though, the UM580 is reasonably priced with good performance. However, if you don't mind something less fancy, do check out my B-Link Sur 5 review. It's a mid-range mini that's got great bang for buck. Cheers!